Hi guys, another Rousey audio video coming to you today. I'm sorry about the mess in here. Um, now I just have a little path from the front door to the back. Everything is just, oh my lord, it's full filled up. Um, what I am in process of doing is, since I made a video earlier about expanding and getting more room here, I have um, given notice to where I had my warehouse and warehouse storage facilities that I would no longer need their services or facility. So I had taken everything, well, let me rephrase that, 98% of what I had in storage and had in, in my warehouse. I have moved it to a different location for a temporary storage for a few weeks and a lot of it was taken down here on purpose. Uh, so now I'm working on uh, the back area uh, to get that set up with uh, shelves, shelves, <laughs> many shelves. You can see our shelf behind me right there too. Um, so there's going to be a lot of shelving. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work back there putting up shelvings and get things in there. That's not what this video is all about though. Um, this is a video about the audiophile myths and how stupid they are and I can't believe that there is a huge portion of the audio community and I basically call themselves audiophiles and high-end audio connoisseurs uh, that creates and fall for so much stupidity and shit as they do uh, there's a few things I'm going to take up and we're going to look into it and see is there anything su substantial supporting that or is it just bullshit. I can blur the thing right off the bat. There, most things that audiophiles are claiming are total BS. And let's start first off with the one biggest myth of them all that is just total BS but it's so spread out in the audiophile community and that is price is everything if your equipment is not costly enough or expensive enough or if it doesn't cost 200,000 500,000 a million dollars you don't have audiophile grade equipment which is totally BS. If you want to look up the term audiophile, it has nothing to do with price at all. You can get very, very good equipment for $2,000. You can get very good equipment for $5,000, which would easily be considered so-called audiophile. But of course, these audiophile stupid idiots wants to distance themselves, of course, from people who can afford the two and five thousand dollar range equipment, so of course they are they are pushing the limits for what is considered audiophile and uh, to a higher price bracket, and it's all about bragging rights. It's nothing more. It has nothing to do with sound. Has nothing to do with music. And what I have learned over the years is that most audiophiles could care less about music, and all they care about is their equipment, and then the price tag, the higher price tag they have, the more bragging rights they have. So price is a total BS, bullshit, stupid thing that only a few morons in the audiophile community really think is important. So now I've established that. Now, I have seen over the, um, the years, I've talked to a lot of audio, so-called audiophiles. I've talked to a lot of so-called self-proclaimed audio gurus and all kinds of stuff um, I have had him in a professional setting I have had him on, on a two, two man thing eye to eye discussion um, we have had him at music message shows audio file shows hi-fi shows whatever they want to call them and it never, never ceased to uh, surprise me that Another thing is when we when we look up away from the price, it comes down to brands. Certain brands are not audiophile enough for these audiophiles, 
and they only say and and here there is a little bit of a uh, separation here some audio files can include more brands than others but then you have the little hardcore group which is like they only accept like two or three or four brands when some more audio files can maybe accept seven eight nine brands and if you don't have these brands you are not an audio file so who freaking care uh, it's not about the brand it's not about the equipment um audio being an audio file is all about the music so once again they stray away from the mu what is important which is the music and they land on either the price or the brand um so once again um it doesn't matter what brand you have um, I don't care if the so-called audiophiles doesn't consider uh, certain brands. Let's take Dali, for example, uh, as out audiophile enough. And some audiophiles even grin on their nose and start crying if you refer to them as uh, and say that B Boris and Wilkins are audiophile. And they start going like, oh, no, it's not. They have way too much products that are in the cheaper categories. They're not audiophile company. They don't have audiophile grade components or, or products once again total bullshit um, so it doesn't really matter um, you can buy an amplifier a pair of speakers a preamp a CD player a turntable um, from a, a, a totally different brand than what the audiophile so-called audiophiles are proving to be on audiophile quality uh, and it still played the socks off what they are claiming to be audiophile so they're stuck in their way on price and brands those goes hand in hand so those two are total BS now another thing is all these gadgets and gig gags and and stupid things that they come up with we can take for instance cables and wires you know cryogenic free frozen cables heat treated cables all kinds of stuff um, that are being put out there cables are cables for the most part except um, I would suggest that it doesn't matter what kind of speaker you use what kind of amp you use um, I have always been of that um, opinion that um, either 99.999% copper or OFC is the minimum you should go why well it has to do with conductivity it has to do with corrosion it has to have to do with withstanding the elements around it and um, and it has to do with power transfer and a lot of stuff like that so I have always been of that opinion that 10 to 12 gauge um, OFC or 99.999% copper is the way to go. I would never use um, CCA, copper clad aluminum wires. They have very poor conductivity, but it has nothing to do with being cryogenic, frozen or treated uh, or heat treated or twisted in a special way or being hung up to dry for five years before they twisted. Uh, any stupid claims like that that has to do with wires and cables um, especially um, when it starts to float into power cables, speaker cables, RCA, uh, a la interconnects, some people call them. Um, it doesn't matter what type of cable it is or wire. Um, it doesn't matter if it's like this directional or twisted in a certain way or had a cryogenic treatment or heat treatment in a special way. or It does not matter. It's total BS. But of course, all audiophiles would want you to believe that this is very, very special and it has a huge impact on the sound, which is a load of horse shit. Cables are the biggest, stupidest, most ridiculous snake oil business out there. Go out and buy a regular OFC cable and or a 99.999% copper cable it will do just fine and <laughs> this <laughs> project the sound and 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 then the music in a, in a very good way 
and I doubt if you did a blind test between, uh, let's say, speaker cables for now. If you do speaker cables that are, let's say, 8 feet long, you have two of them, one to each speaker, um, and you pay maybe like, let's say, 100 bucks for it. If you did a blind test and you took those $100 speaker cables up against some $25,000 speaker cables that are so-called heat treated or treated with some kind of special coating or some special chemical or being frozen, you wouldn't hear any difference. You will not hear any difference. I have had, up for the years, I've had the the. The, the very, very bizarre experience of standing or sitting be between or beside so-called audiophiles that were really talking certain cables up and, and they were claiming that this was so fantastic and it had a huge impact on the sound and, and one of those spe the speaker cables that was used was I think it was $4,900 for the pair and they were six and a half feet long each those two of them and they were tested up in a blind setting this was back in 1999 or 2000 I think it was either one of those years and it had absolutely no impact on the sound same CD player was used same amplifier was used same speakers were used no hearing differences we didn't press had any per perceived uh, well something happened to my phone again um i'm gonna <laughs> there's gonna be a little pew right there um so like i said we had no physical or practical experience that the sound was better with the 4900 pair of speaker cables and we tested them up against i think the ones that we tested them up against I was not in charge of the test. It was a store uh, in the town where I live. Um, and they wanted to prove another store wrong. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. And yeah, there was a $4,900 pair. And they were tested up against a, a pair of speaker wires. That was like, I think, $295. So $4,900, $295. Big difference. So... And there was no no difference we could not hear any difference when it was tested with um test equipment there was no uh, you couldn't see or 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 point to any point in the test that i said this is where it's better so there was no difference um so wires are one of audiophiles big babies but they're also one of their most stupid thing that they come out with. Lately, well, let me go to another thing too. And because this covers interconnects, power cables, speaker cables, you name it. Lately, there have been some more stupid shit added. And I'm going to come back to that. Uh, and this is going to get really, really fun. Um, Another thing is, when you see people, uh, audiophiles on YouTube videos and in magazines and pictures and whatever, um, they use these blocks to put cables on. And they call it like cable bridges or cable highways or whatever, or cable run blocks or whatever. I'm not sure what they call it. But all the cables are on blocks elevated from the floor. Uh, for some reason, that is supposed to do wonders for the sound. And uh, once again, I have had the experience and um, practical experience of being in a, uh, a setting where that was tested. Uh, this was many years ago. I think this was back in 2005 or 2006 somewhere. And um, it had absolutely no influence on the sound at all. Not in the sound quality uh, aspect of it. Not in the power of it. There was not, it didn't generate generate less noise because it was kind of, it was there wasn't any noise to begin with. So that's another stupid thing that they came up with. And I'm going to come back at the end of the video why all this stupid shit is going on. Um, 
lately there has been and there's a, probably a lot of t tons of stuff i may not even touching in this video but the one or two things that really caught me caught my attention lately is apparently there is some companies now that are starting to <laughs> to <laughs> oh lord <laughs> this is so stupid there has been a development because of where we're going okay more and more people are getting into digital and streaming and downloads and stuff like that so this one company i don't even remember their name and this one company went out on facebook for a two good two or three months and they were blasting things out there and and they were making claims that you had to have audiophile grade or high-end grade cat5 cables hdmi cables but this doesn't stop there guys get this audiophile ram you know the memory sticks that you have in your computer yeah audiophile grade ram memory whatever <laughs> yeah that's how stupid and how far this audiophile nonsense has gone. Um, and I mean, they were on there defend because they got a lot of backlash from this. Because they posted this not only in the audiophile groups where they probably were praised and was hailed as gods. But they also posted it in regular audio groups, the vintage audio groups. And they couldn't post that in any worse groups because a lot of the people in these vintage audio groups or the regular audio groups are so far away from this audiophile bullshit stuff that they got a lot of backlash online in many groups and they were sitting there defending this with claims and opinions that was just laughable at best so yeah audiophile grade ram sticks or cards or whatever Remember that next time you buy a laptop or a computer and you want to stream or download music from online, you have to ask your computer store to get audiophile grade RAM. <laughs> oh Lord! It just gives me a headache thinking about this shit. <clears throat> now, last week, this really, really, really Took the cake last week there was a discussion online in one of the groups um, and this is one group that really really are on the uh, on the edge of being psychopathic you know I'm not gonna even mention the name of that group but you have some really a bunch of people in there that might need some help they need some padded rooms they need some uh, guys and girls and boys and men's in white coats and th they should be swallowing some pills instead of listening to music because now it has become a mandatory thing of using <laughs> fuses audiophile grade fuses and when I say fuse or fuses, some speakers you may, might know have um, a glass, little one inch or three quarter inch glass fuse in the back of the speaker. It's like a, a protection thing, overpowering protection thing. Most amplifiers or receivers or audio equipment, such as amplifiers, on the back has a little slot with a little screw thing with a fuse inside of it, glass fuse either three quarter inch or an inch you know those little 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 ton fuses yeah um yeah they have to be audiophile grade fuses now because apparently it has a huge and this was i'm not kidding they said it has a huge impact on the sound quality are you freaking kidding me and I mean, this was in that group. And I mean, when you get to that point, yeah, you don't, you should stop listening to music. You should take, pick up the phone and you should call one of these guys in a white, white lab coat. 
and ask to be put in a padded room and get your pills taken three times a day. Because that's how mentally disturbed it has become. Let me see if I have something back here. We have here some receivers and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna check it just to say, to say something about it. I have a JVC receiver right there. This one doesn't have any fuse. You probably have to have a, a bigger amplifier. So let me see, I have another JVC right here. Uh, no fuse. So it's mostly power amplifiers. Uh, too bad I don't have one right on my hand here, so I could tell you. But from what I remember, most amplifiers that has a fuse on the back, okay? Those little ton, uh, or there's another brand that makes these fuses. One inch, they're either three, or three quarter inch or one inch. Okay. Most amplifiers within the normal range of wattage have somewhere between 5 amp and 25 amp fuse size. Very rarely do you see over 20. But some of the more, more expensive ones and the more powerful ones, yeah, you have to, of course, upgrade the fuse according to the power out on the speaker terminal. So the more powerful amp you have, the bigger the fuse is. But if you have a 100 watt per channel, two channel amplifier, yeah, you probably have a 15, somewhere between 10 and 15 amp fuse in there. Now, what these audiophile idiots doesn't know is fuses are made for one thing and one thing only. They are meant to be a, a quick thermal break, have a quick thermal breakdown, okay? They're supposed to blow and break down fast. You get that point? You know why? If they don't, you will mess up your amplifier. So they have to use some type of alloy, some type of metal that will break off fast. That doesn't have too much resistance. That doesn't have a too high of a thermal melting point. Okay? Because that's what we're talking about here. A thermal melting point. And fuses are made in thickness. And we're talking about mils here. That is measured in mils. Um, not even millimeters. Um, and so the width and the height and the density of the metal is what decides how many amps that fuse is. Of course, the lower it is, the faster it's going to blow. The higher the amp rating is, the slower it's going to... The more wattage or more power you have to take. To blow it and then of course you have slow blow fast blow normal blah 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 blah. all this is very carefully made when the and and engineered and calculated so what these audio files are claiming now is that you have to have um a fuse that are either made of copper silver rhodium or gold oh my lord can we just get that padded cell right away? What they don't understand is that today, you know, their, their cheap metal is being used. Yes, I know. Most fuses, however, has an alloy. And what alloy means, it doesn't just mean one. It has a mixture of different metals. It can be zinc. It can be a little bit of copper. Not much, just a little bit and nickel and and a few other things <clears throat> that will give you the wanted thermal breaking point that you need for each amp rating and they know by experience that 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 alloy combination is very good and what they do is if they want to raise the thermal breaking point of a fuse they just add a little bit more copper into it because copper has a very high melting point compared to the other ones. Silver is even higher. Gold is even higher. So, and rhodium, where the frick did rhodium come from? 
Jesus. I tell you, internet and Facebook really brings out a lot of stupid people. <sighs> so, and the claim here was that he had taken out the regular fuse that was nickel, copper, zinc, and some other alloy that is normally used in most fuses. He had taken that out, he said, and replaced it with a pure copper fuse. Try and look up pure copper fuses. Try and see how you can get that and how available that are to you. Yes, they use it in car audio, but that's mainly for a power cord from the battery to the amplifier, not on the output channels of the, of the amp or the speaker channels. And then um, the claim was that apparently this had a night and day different in, difference in sound quality. According to these people, the sound was so different and so much better when they used copper fuses than the other one. And then, of course, more people got involved and they said, yeah, well, we, I tried a, a silver fuse one time. Okay. Google silver fuses made with silver. And then, of course, it got just more and more idiotic. And, and these guys were freaking serious. And I made some comments. And all of a sudden, this freaking stupid admin or moderator or whatever disabled the comments. Because if there's one thing the audiophiles do not want, it is to have a discussion about how stupid things are and they don't want to be told against what they believe and if they can because they can't back it up because all they're saying i said okay bring me proof and the only answer i got is if you haven't tried it yourself how can you prove that it's not okay I can't. I can't prove one way or another. But since you are the one claiming this, then give me a proof for your claims. I don't have to prove anything to dis disprove your claim. So prove to me that your claim about copper silver fuses are better than the regular ones. And do so with hard facts. And they came back to me and they said, well, I listened to this uh, side by side for many years that's not proof first of all you're biased and you're saying that in you when you put this new fuse in you want it, it to sound better you are expecting it to sound better so of course it's going to sound better in your little empty mind that should be in a padded cell so that's not proof at all however there wasn't they didn't stop there and they went on to go on and say, well, there was a company that made fuses that made, was made of gold. 18 karat gold, nonetheless. What these dumb fucks, I'm sorry, what these dumb idiots doesn't know or seem to know is exactly what I talked about earlier. The thermal breaking point of each metal. So at the end of that conversation, after they had spilled their guts more and I wanted to go back in and I wanted to make one last comment, of course they had disabled the comment section. So I posted a new one and I got, it, <laughs> I got the conversation started again. And um, of course it, it, it took off the direction where I wanted it to go. I want to set this up for them to fail and they did. They took the, the, they took the bait hook, line, and sinker, and they fell to the freaking bottom, all of them. <coughs> you have to remember one thing here. Fuses are a very old technology. It has been engineered, tested, developed, de developed, and retested, and retested multiple hundreds, thousands of times. 
not only by one institution or one organization or one company or one lab or whatever. It has been tested by a lot of different entities. Amp manufacturers, labs, electronic engineers, diffuse manufacturers. Hold on one second. My throat is drying out. <clears throat> lab, lab testing facilities, amp manufacturers, fuse manufacturers, and a bunch of others have tested fuses for years and decades. If you can come and tell me that an amp manufacturer like Pass Labs, Mark Levinson, Macintosh, Class A, Electro Compania, Moon, Acurus, all these high-end brands that makes amplifiers in, in the 10, 15, 20, 50, 200,000 dollar range. When they use fuses that has an alloy of a little bit of copper, zinc, nickel, and a few other things. You want to come and tell me that they haven't done the, their research? When it's good enough for them to use those type of fuses, it just becomes stupid that some idiot that should be in a padded cell is sitting in his uh, living room or basement or whatever um, claiming that gold fuses are the way to go. Silver fuses are the way to go. That copper fuses over regular fuses are like night and day. That silver fuses takes everything to a different level. And that gold fuses are the ultimate in sound quality. Coo -coo 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 there should be some alarm bells ringing somewhere. I don't know if the family members are blind. Or if they're moved out. Most likely. Um, but something is really alarming here. Okay. I didn't think too much about it when they were screaming about cab cables and wires 20, 25, 30 years ago. I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe they, they, maybe they have a point. Back then, I didn't, I, I didn't invest too much time to set myself into it. But as time has gone by, year by year, month by month, quarter by quarter, there's something new. All of a sudden, it's not about wires anymore. It's not about having the right brand anymore. It's not about buying the most expensive shit that you can find. I'm not saying shit in a bad way here, okay? Because I like some of the more expensive stuff. But, um, you know, if you look away and, and, and you try to forget that this is about a brand, a price, wires that are made in a special way. But when we start to come down to fuses and RAM sticks, or whatever you call it, and cat fire cables, are you freaking kidding me? Someone lost their marbles decades ago and they're still looking for them and they're trying to find every little thing they can to create their little marble heaven again. Because I tell you, there's nothing more stupid than justifying something so ridiculous as this. And this is why audiophiles are dumb, stupid, ignorant, gullible. Because you have to be dumb and stupid and gullible to, to buy into all this freaking nonsense and pay 5, 10, 15, 20, 25,000 dollars 
for a little length of cables and then you pay another four or five thousand dollars for some wood blocks to put your cables on and then you go and buy a $150 fuse because it's made of silver and then you go and buy a $395 one foot cat5 cable or they had some cat5 cables that were like 10 feet for like three thousand dollars I think it was and and all this other bullshit all this bullshit and if you believe in this bullshit I'm sorry but you're a freaking duck dumb and a big idiot and you're so stupid and this is why these people should be in a padded room and that's all I have to say about this